Morning, everyone. Morning, Fiona. <laughs> um, thanks, Tracy. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for uh, coming and attending. You know, when uh, when Tracy asked me to give the opening uh, keynote uh, for this uh, conference, Buds, Batteries, and, and Blockchain Conference, I thought to myself, what on earth do these three things have to do with one another? No problem. And uh, it became a, a lively debate around our office here um, and a discussion. And uh, we considered what unifies these three sectors. And um, this is what we came to, to, to think about. They all represent a fundamental shift in society today, being driven by innovation and technology across sectors, economic opportunity, consumer demand for change, corporate social responsibility, and government action. An analyst at CRU, uh, one of the most uh, foremost business intelligent firms in the world, has likened the shift we're seeing from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles to the same type of seismic shift that we saw when we went from horse and buggy to internal combustion engines in the, in the 1990s, in the 1900s. So some of us, like myself, were around then. Most of you guys weren't. <laughs> Um, the same type of groundbreaking shift is also occurring in, uh, in cannabis with a wide range of implications, legal, economic, and social. And in blockchain, a term so new that it was just added to the Webster Dictionary on March the 5th of this year. I myself, uh, President and CEO of eCobalt, uh, the only near-term permitted primary cobalt company in the United States. By primary, uh, it means that our project uh, has a native metal uh, of high-grade cobalt. Uh, this differs from most of the deposits in the world which contain cobalt as byproducts, such as copper and nickel, and usually fairly low grades. So your DRC uh, production is uh, copper cobalt. Uh, it depends on the copper price for production. The uh, nickel uh, cobalt production, Russian, Cuban, uh, Sudbury, uh, are our project primary cobalt. I've been with the company since uh, 1992. That was even before we uh, had the RAM deposit uh, staked. And I've been with the company all along as we advanced the project from early stage greenfields exploration to where we are today. So as I like to say, uh, we're a 25 year overnight success. As I met uh, some people there this morning, it's uh, tenacity, you have to stay with this, you have to go through cycles. It takes a long time to bring these projects into production. In all those years, I can generally say that I've never seen a market for cobalt as we have today. During the last cycle, when e-cobalt, then uh, Formation Metals, was starting construction in 2012, we were planning to produce a super alloy grade cobalt metal used in wind turbines as a hardening agent and in jet engines. Approximately 400 pounds of cobalt is used in an average jet engine, and it uh, allows them to burn hotter so they're much more fuel efficient. This market on its own, this super alloy grade market, is expected to double by 2020. The current cobalt market, however, is fundamentally different to what it was then, and for that reason, I believe it's here to stay. What's driving this fundamental change? The market for electric vehicles and renewable energy. If we just look at the electric vehicles for a moment, Bloomberg estimates that by 2040, 54% of new car sales and 35% of global car fleet sales will be electric. To put that into context, EVs make up only one and a half to 2% of global car sales, and China represents half of that amount. This growth is being driven pri primarily by government policies in response to consumer demand for more environmentally sustainable technologies and modes of transportation, and not just passenger vehicles, but transport trucks as well. In February, Germany's Supreme Court announced that diesel cars could be banned from certain cities, opening the door for other such bans across Europe, all part of your, your diesel gate. By 2030 in India and 2040 in France and Britain, internal combustion engines will be banned from the streets entirely. And China, one of the leading polluting nations of the world and the fastest growing market for EVs, is working on a plan to replace combustion engines by providing subsidies to car manufacturers who produce electric vehicles with high quality batteries. They've recently announced that the range 
uh, for the, the most of the subsidies, if, it's, if the range is less than 150 kilometers, there's no subsidy. If it's 150 to 400 kilometer range, partial subsidy, and greater than 400 kilometers, maximum subsidy. They've also made the, the shift from uh, phosphate to uh, the lithium ion batteries. So that's gonna be a, a big impact on, on world demand for the, the metals. And just on top of that, as a deterrent to the combustion engines in China, individuals will have to enter into a lottery which will give them the right for a $15,000 deposit to purchase a combustion engine vehicle only if they win the lottery. Three in 100 people will be selected through that lottery. And then each car will have an odd or even number registration. So individuals will only be able to drive on every second day. So subsidies on one side, deterrent on the other side. It really kind of paints the picture as to where we're going here with, with China leading the way. Now to mention uh, uh, grid storage, which require large scale batteries and is set to shake up the power grid by increasing demand sixfold by 2030. The US Federal Energy Regulatory Commission ruled that so-called energy storage companies, such as Tesla and AES Corp, will be allowed to compete against traditional power plants in the US wholesale market by the end of 2020. That's big batteries. It's been said that the future will be talking about energy in terms of kilowatts per hour, rather than barrels of oil per day, making the case even stronger for the battery metals. Raw materials such as cobalt and lithium are integral to this growth. The lithium ion batteries in EVs, for example, require cobalt for efficiency and safety over long ranges. One of the key hurdles to overcome in order to inspire widespread adoption of EVs over combustion engines is the distance these cars can drive on a single charge. Cobalt is a critical component for this. Currently, approximately 100,000 tons of cobalt is produced in the world per year with demand projected to grow on a compound annual growth rate of about 11% over the next 10 years. So tremendous growth in this industry. On the supply side, 60% already goes into the battery market, a market still in its infancy. So with demand for batteries and EVs alone expected to grow fourfold by 2020, we're going to need a lot more cobalt. To put the supply crunch into further context, eCobalt's Idaho Cobalt Project will produce 1,500 tons of cobalt per year, accounting for about 2% of the world's demand of cobalt. And it is globally one of the only of a handful of projects bringing new supply of cobalt on in the near term. There simply isn't enough supply in the foreseeable future to satisfy expected demand. And sure, there's lots of other projects in the world uh, being advanced, uh, especially with the price of the battery metals at current highs. We need to have all those projects coming into line. But most of these projects are years, if not decades, away from going into production, if at all. Another factor is the need for ethical, stable sources of cobalt. In 2017, 67% of the world's cobalt came from the DRC, a part of the world with major social political issues. We're seeing this right now with issues at Glencore, Glencore's Katanga project, where their JV partner, state-owned Gekamines, has served them with a court order to dissolve the JV amidst allegations of high levels of debt. And on top of that, a freezing order of alleged unpaid royalties of almost $3 billion. Clearly, the DRC has its challenges. Not to mention, uh, of course, the major human rights violations with proven reports of child labor from artisanal mining in the DRC. Last year, Amnesty International put a report condemning some of the largest electronic companies from Apple to Microsoft for their poor supply chain management and lack of progress in eliminating materials in their products that could be supplied through child labor. Companies are under growing pressure from consumers and investors to show that the cobalt they use has come from supply chains free of human rights violations. And this is where the batteries and one of the other topics of this conference, blockchain, are intersecting. A pilot scheme is being tested by the World Economic Forum, whereby cobalt produced by a vetted artisanal miner will be digitally tagged and entered on blockchain and then tracked using blockchain at every stage in the supply chain all the way to the refiner. In an area of growing concern, which could have a negative impact on cobalt by forcing the price to go too high, we don't want to see it so high that it makes use of cobalt unfeasible. 
This is an innovative solution that further demonstrates the existence of fundamental shifts driving the, the way people are thinking and behaving in their day-to-day -day lives as well as in their businesses. Here we're seeing blockchain in action, providing the type of transparency that it was created for in the first place. Blockchain technology has the ability to single-handedly change the concept of accountability for each industry, from mining to marijuana. And this is revolutionary amidst already seismic changes happening in each of the markets alone. In the cannabis sector, we're also seeing how blockchain can play an integral role in an industry with huge separation between producers, growers, labs, and dispensaries. Blockchain can be the solution to tying it all together. And companies are forming to capitalize on this business, many of those in the room, creating blockchain which will compile information on the entire life cycle of the product from seed to consumer for the end user to track. Innovation is what drives capital markets. It's why we're all here today. Every single person in this room is taking part in this multifaceted global evolution, either as an investor or a creator or both. And innovating is what manufacturers must do to stay alive, to stay relevant. Getting back to batteries for a moment, we're seeing an unprecedented move by end-use manufacturers like Apple and Volkswagen taking steps to source raw materials directly from the miners, driven by this call for ethical sourcing compounded by an impending supply crunch. For example, Apple has reported being in talks to buy cobalt directly from miners to secure supplies for the lithium ion batteries. About a quarter of the current global production, global cobalt production, is used in smartphones today, a market which is projected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 6% through 2021. And SoftBank, a multi-billion dollar disruptive innovative communications and technology firm recently announced that it took a stake in Namaska Lithium to secure supply for the batteries as part of their information revolution. Namaska is a, is a near-term lithium producer similar to eCobalt trading at $1.30 with a market cap of just over $500 million. At eCobalt, we're speaking to these manufacturers as well as we believe that the Idaho Cobalt Project can be a safe, secure supply of cobalt for them by producing a clean cobalt concentrate highly desirable to the battery manufacturing market. There is no other soon-to-be producing cobalt project in the world that can make these claims. After 25 years and three cobalt cycles, I've never seen anything quite like what we're seeing today. New ways of thinking by government and society are changing the way we do things. And we're seeing this across the spectrum. From legalization of cannabis and social acceptance for a new form of therapy and rec recreation, to innovation through blockchain in how ethical sources of material are tracked. I get asked all the time, but do you really think people will give up their gas engines? Internal combustion engines will continue to be feasible? Yes, but there will come a time when they will be socially unacceptable. Just ask the next generation. I'm hearing this from my daughter already. The world must adapt to these changing consumer and societal demands. At eCobalt, I'm proud to say we're playing an integral role in this evolution at the very beginning of the supply chain with our primary cobalt solution. There's a paradigm shift happening in the world today where the old ways of getting around, medicating and investing are changing and adapting to new innovative ways of thinking. As investors, we can not only capitalize on these changes, but also support this innovation by funding interesting projects that are fueling this way and forward thinking. Thanks very much for your time. Please enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks.